Hello and welcome to Let's Play Disco Elysium Part 24. So, having established we don't look, want to look at the red chair which looks suspiciously like a torture chair, it seems that there is nothing else in this building to look at so I guess we head out for now. Hmm, it looks like we can look at something kind of around the side of the building. We can look at the window. Let's saunter along up here. Through the broken glass, dusty shelves and a forgotten chair. Okay, nothing we don't already know. Oh, we're thinking something. Sounds of life in the north. A washboard scrums filth from fabric. Ooh. Where, where is this washboard? That's an interesting. Did we have a poke it around this building here. Looks like we can only see the rooftop. Do not think we can get up there. Aha. Uh -huh. Some some chaps over here. Chaps, indeed. The bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through. Um, meaning we can't go that way. Cinder blocks charred, a makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. And a bench. I assume we can just sit down here for a moment if we wish. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm, the lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. What does it say? A les vous en? Everything's very dilapidated. You see dust covered linens, dried tulips on a bed. Oh, free trousers. Plus one to the Kingdom of Conscience. Very nice. Are they are they building this? Is this a new construction? got a lot of graffiti if it's a new construction. White curtains have been drawn shut. No looking in. A wetting stone well worn and covered in dust. Okay. Ah. Looks rather more interesting around this way. We could have come along the beach. The underside of the boat has recently been tarred. Okay, gives us the impression of a... Uh, ah, haven't seen the RCM around in ages. This does seem like a, a proper little fishing village. Don't mind if I just rifle through your stuff. Ooh, 50p. Or whatever. So, it's a washerwoman. Yes, indeed, a washerwoman. The woman next to a bucket of clothes hums an odd melody. Her eyes are closed. You're not sure about the melody, but it might be South Samaran, possibly Sigayan, also known as Apricot Suzerainy. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. <laughs> lean forward, I think. Let's, uh, let's be polite. Oh, welcome, police officer. 
we don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. Trouble? Say the second thing, Bratan. Show sure you've got style. <laughs> oh, my 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 talking necktie has really got bad advice for me, hasn't it? Um <laughs> what he said, we're cops. We don't cause trouble. We take care of trouble. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Which you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. Hmm, I guess you didn't see me crash my car then. Hmm. Wait, I've been here before? No, not you personally. I meant the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. Oh, One of gosh. them killed another. Lock himself in that woodshed over there. She points to the building behind her. He was brooding, needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. Ooh. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. What kind of an ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. <laughs> I am an ill omen, all right. You're not. No one around here considers us an ill omen. People would have told us. <laughs> Maybe we are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here, as long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then, because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park your motor carriage. <laughs> and not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone, searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Oh, where could someone stay around here? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. Her soapy thumb points to the building behind her. Um... How much is it? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. There's this guy, Gart, who makes me give him money every night just so I don't die out in the cold. Hmm. <laughs> That's exactly how they got get you. That's why we built our own cinder block houses on the seaside, so we don't have to give money to those crooks. She looks around. They might look, not look like much, but they're ours. Wait, why isn't anyone using the room? My cr kids grew up and left, like they do. The house is long empty now. I live in the small side attachment. It's easier and cheaper to keep warm. One more time, I can just have the room? Aye, she nods and looks at the shack. The room is pretty bare bones, but it's got a bed and a roof over it. That's more than some folks have around here. Good God, that's, that's just... Uh... <laughs> I thought this lady was nice, but, um, wow. Now, this is real Revocolian hospitality. That gut must be half kipped or something. You've got yourself a tenant. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. A key appears from under her apron. She hands it to you. Well, if you're not in the 
hostel in the morning, I'll know where to find you. Kim looks around and adds, Here, in a shack. <laughs> what is in this fishing village? Just us. She sounds tired. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. What do you mean? This is pretty much a non-place, she grins. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. <laughs> There's got to be something here. Tell me. She waves her hand south southwest. Over there, you can find more of the same. Shacks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. The pox? What's that? An old military hospital and its surroundings. She looks towards the buildings to the south. Or it used to be, during the time of the suzerain. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell-shocked veterans and folks looking for some quiet in in the old sanatorium gardens. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinder block houses. Shacks as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. She tightens the scarf around her neck. The staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. <laughs> Is there any way to make a little money around here? Here? For you? She lets out a dry chortle. No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks tried hiding from their women and then forgot about. I'm, I'm sure we might be able to find ourselves some of those. Who else lives in this village? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. A few new folks live in the house to the east. She nods her head across the courtyard. But they were away right now. And then there's the drunks. She sighs. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. Uh, who? What drunks? Sooner or later you'll see for yourself. She slowly shakes her head. Don't have to look long before you find these guys. Ah, she may have met me before when I was in a less policey garb. Mm, I think telling her the place is pornographically poor is a little cruel. Alright, there's another topic I'd like to address. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. What's further down the coast? Not much, she replies and wipes her forehead. There's the abandoned church, the DeLorean Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. She smiles a gap-toothed smile and smells the air. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. So they don't hold services there anymore? The ecclesiates no they tried but things just keep happening crime accidents other things the place never stays open she frowns it's a pity it used to be such a nice church hmm anything else down coast before you get to the church there's some ruins an apartment complex or some kind of electrical plant. Run down bunch of houses, empty. Um, which is it then? Apartments or an electrical plant? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. She shrugs. Before the war? I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samaria. Or Samara, even. <laughs> Anything else of note? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk, but it's closed. Mm. Who'd want to come to a fish market here? No one, that's why it's closed. After a long pause, she adds, It was once a bustling place back when I was young, and so was everyone else. Now we catch 
what now what we catch we do bring in goes straight onto a lorry for the delta or somewhere else that's it there's got to be more along the coast <laughs> what you're one of those real estate people with big plans if you want a development opportunity you can check out the abandoned building over at land's end used to be a supply depot we think sending goods and ammo across the bay it's jammed shut though we tried to get in see if there was anything to sell or scavenge but it's impossible okay so they do still fish they just don't sell the fish locally it go goes on a lorry she drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash and now you know everything there is to know about this coast tell me about yourself who exactly are you here me no one just an old washerwoman mother called me Isabel um, or even Isabel if that's what you're asking <laughs> and my married name is Sadie now it's your turn mister <laughs> uh, call me Harry why I guess I will Harry I it just rolls off the tongue I used to know a Harry, strong lad, but dumb as a rock. What happened to him? He did too many narcotics. So many he fell off his boat and split his skull on a boy. She rubs soap off her hands. Folks who saw it say his head cracked open like a melon. Nasty. Nasty. Okay. S goodbye. <laughs> I'm off. Ooh, so... This is our new place, I think. It looks pretty good compared to uh, some of the places we've seen. You can't see into the house from this angle. Inside you hear the cosy sound of some kind of heater sputtering. Mm, the door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Let's unlock the shack door with the key. I'll wait f outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living arrangement. But just so you know, after we're done with the day, I'll still be staying in the Whirling in Rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. <laughs> the key turns with a satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. Okay. Let's check out our new lodgings. Well, home sweet home. And that old lady looked to be a pretty nice landlady. We've got a mirror in here too. Ah, we can attempt to stop the expression. You see the waves, the sea and a church. Nice view. Old science fiction magazines, books about bird watching, an almanac from 39. This intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving out pleasant warmth. The floorboards creak under your step. Using a thermodynamic expander condenser cycle. Nice. What is this? Ooh, we could shave. Get the mutton chops off. On the table you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Is shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face, nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt, wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. <laughs> we we are probably gonna mess this up. Should we give it a go? Why don't we give it a go? We can't look any worse, or can we? Oh, your hand trembles as you scratch at your cheek. Oh, oh no, that's not how a grown man shaves. <laughs> um, we prob probably want to leave it for now. <laughs> Thank God, I would have cut your throat. <laughs> the, 
the centipede is exaggerating. People don't actually cut their own throats when they're shaving, at least not accidentally. Got to accept the mutton chops for now. Must presumably be where I sleep. The bed is comforting if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. It's not time for rest yet. Boat lady. Is there a reason that I'm poking around this old town? The street sign is illegible below the graffito. Hard to see the details. The colours, all warm and welcoming, are cosy enough though. trough where really nothing grows. Maybe in the spring. A couple of bunk beds. Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. It's a stuffed grouse taxidermy. If we can take it, I guess that's okay. Hello, mister. A young girl, barely four, five years old, sits on the sofa. She's looking at you with frank curiosity. I mean, why did you nick my bird? She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Hmm... Ah, yeah. Um, okay, let's be polite. What's this? Show her the stuffed bird you took from the ceiling. It's a grouse, she yelps, smiling broadly. You might be able to get Gart's good side if you replace the broken skewer that you almost certainly broke. Can I uh, have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure, I mean, you already took it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Mm, I heard there was a girl here who has armoured gloves. Is that you? Oh, she looks alarmed. I had gloves. Very big ones. Heavy, too. Where did you get those gloves, says Kim? I found them when Lambie and I were playing hide-and-seek in an empty house where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. Ooh. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. And where are the gloves now? She pouts. I hid them. The twins were going to take them. They're stupid. She lifts the stuffed toy up and looks into its one remaining eye as though searching for confirmation. We're going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. It's for important police business. <laughs> oh... She doesn't really seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. They're in my sandcastle. She points somewhere outside, behind our house, under the sand. You can break the castle, it's not very good. Oh, Where are your parents? My mom's outside and I don't really know about my dad. She gives you a bright smile, like it's a good thing. Okay, goodbye. Bye! The girl's large, curious eyes remain fixed on you. And she said, Aha, uh -huh. oh, I see a sand castle. Excellent. Oh, it looks lovely down here, doesn't it? Weather has not been kind to Lily's little sandcastle. 
The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb ne network. Broken. The little castle? The lieutenant smiles a little. The reigning lord must have come upon some really tough times and let it to let it slip into such decrepitude. Reach into the catacombs and pull out the shiny object. The walls and floors give way to the giant's greed. Collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Congratulations! That's the gauntlets down then. We're doing good on the armour collection front. Ooh. I wonder what they are like. Just, oh, can I can I not have a peek over over this way? Yes I can, just about. Looking back at you from the rust coloured water, you Wait, take a longer look at yourself and how you're reflected in that slick chemical rainbow. What do you see? Metaphor. It's always a metaphor. Some kind of metaphor for me. This is more important than you. That's the blood of industry you see below you. The runner from Coal City further down the coast. The engines of fortune once roared here. Great wealth poured into Revacol, the Delta. As did smoke, waste, sickness, life. What happened? The engines stopped. The West Revacolian Industries base was dismantled after the war. Now extinguished coke furnaces dot the landscape. A landscape despoiled by industry. There was serious dereliction of duty in this clean-up. Uh, perhaps you could dedicate your life to cleaning it up, you're a cop. You must concern yourself with different messes. Even so, it's pretty to think. Yeah, this could be a nice place. It's uh, just so polluted. Right, I'm thinking a bit more back to duty. We've done pretty good with the uh, the gloves and the digs. I might poke around this house first. There looks like a few. Oh, yep, could use that. Now we don't have to spend on the whirling. That's helpful. Construction material. Whoever planned to build this house left in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, it does look like it was never fully constructed. And that this happened a while ago. Hang on, I have a tool for this. Tool, tool, tool. This one? I think so. Aha! Money and magnesium. Not bad. practically rich. I mean if we're not spending 20 a day then that's uh, that's really something. Who are these gentlemen? Are these the drunks? If they are then they're the sort of people I would have hung out with. You stop mid-step and put your hand on the garish necktie. That bottle. Bratan. Just look at that bottle. I don't really care about any bottle. I don't want to look at it. You should care. I'm getting a very special vibe from that bottle. Please go talk to him. I need to look at it closer. Hmm. Seems like it might be a bad idea. Hey, Takina! A 30 something man clad in a two piece Lycra TM jumpsuit puts down his pilsner and extends a hand in greeting. Good to see ya! How's business? How's the old reality situation treating ya? Oh. 
we have met before. Shake his hand. So what's happening? He picks up his beer. Hmm. Okay, wait. Tequila? Yeah, Tequila Sunset. How are the um, high-concept reality-based adventures proceeding? He says it like it's obviously your name. <laughs> like you call someone Billy Br Bruniel or leader of the Fourth Street Gang. Good, these people know your true name. Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. <laughs> More on that later. I like this guy. You should too. He respects you by calling you by your true name. Mm. <laughs> I have re-entered reality to conquer it, to bend it to my will. I am the law. That's the spirit I used to shape reality into my image a long time ago, but these days are over now. He looks at his shit-stained licra jacket with a grim expression. Sadly, things ain't going that well in idiot doom spiral land. Haven't found those keys yet. Haven't won that great piece of arse back. No word from my business buddies. He takes a sip from his beer. This guy's your buddy buddy. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organisation of fraternity. Of drunks. Idiot doom spiral, huh? This is bound to be a good high concept conversation at last. Hmm. What is a tequila sunset? You keep saying it. It's you, your tequila sunset. How do you know this? We've met before, don't you remember? Nope. Are you sure don't? No. Aha! He takes a sip from his beer. Do you want to know how Tequila Sunset came to be? Tequila. Tequila Sunset. Something ominous there. Mm. For some reason, the name Tequila fills me with foreboding. Maybe I shouldn't learn what it means. You think you feel bad now? Wait till you've heard the story. <laughs> n, n no you need the wisdom. Alright, go ahead. Hmm, let me take a sip to moisten my cords. He takes a big sip, then begins. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you, the man, the myth. Uh, did we meet on Friday? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. He takes another sip, then continues. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get piss drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept if you ask me. It is. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. Uh, what happened then? It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Murabund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this. We get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. Oh yes, you do, Bratushka. <laughs> our necktie is talking to us again. The only thing better than that is pushing the pedal to the metal after you kiss the tie. And off we go. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking the billboard? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anyone owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. <laughs> Naturally. Anyway, 
There was a brief silence, a gasp of silence, if you will, followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. It sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold, a beat-up police carriage containing you right there on the beach. You revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time hath come. So naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come, to which you replied. The time hath come for tequila sunset, the end of all things. Mm. <laughs> Say nothing, it's more dignified that way. After which your reality contracted, you jammed the pedal, ploughed right off the jetty and through the ice. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach, crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognising a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we call you that from now on. <laughs> Wait, so is tequila sunset an event or a name? I'm not sure. I think you were the event, tequila sunset. You know, as opposed to a tequila sunrise, which is... Long gone. Ah, sounds pretty good. He smiles. Yeah, I agree. How long did we party for? Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revicolian women. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up, and left without saying anything. Wow, that's quite the story, says Kim. Yeah, I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. <laughs> you must be proud to work with him. If only you knew. <laughs> Ooh. Did I tell you anything specific about the person that fucked me? You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard and that we're all, we've all been fucked too. Please don't open that door. <laughs> Rosemary says, no one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. Hmm. Did I mention losing anything else? Beside your gun and your badge, you said something about your hope, your heart, or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too. That's a big one. Did I say anything about my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Did I say anything about the case? Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. He takes a strong quaff of his beer and that you don't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. Hmm. <laughs> Kim's throwing shade. Did we talk about um, politics? Yeah, you kept talking about how the coal mine owners were fucking us all over, just like that woman fucked you. I didn't agree with you, by the way. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. He takes a long sip of his beer. Mm, did you get a read on what kind of cop I was? You kept apologising for being such a bad cop and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. 
You also kept pausing and knocking the heel of your hand against your temple, saying, Stupid, stupid, stupid. Mm, okay, I don't need to hear any more. He nods. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. Mm. What do you guys do around here? We are saving the world. He looks at his comrades. Please, please, don't call, don't call, begs the man in the pipe. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once a long time ago with enterprise, creativity and willpower, but that didn't work out. Now it's a pirate's life for me. You seem to... It seems like you're characterised by your storytelling ability. Want to tell me another one sometime? whoop de doo So now I'm a fucking storyteller, he says, slapping his knee. Right, why not? Better than a beach bum? Hmm. Why don't you tell me how you became Idiot Doom Spiral? It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? You might get scammed here. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to cost me a lot. No, the reality of the situation requires a more modest contribution. A little motivational package. What do you need? Booze. Did you already forget our party? He taps his finger to the temple. The thing I relayed to you earlier? So have you got anything for good old idiot doom spiral? A bottle for a story seems fair to me. Hmm. I don't want to give you any alcohol. I'm not an enabler. In that case, I'm not a storyteller. He crosses his legs and turns his gaze towards the ground. Uh, okay, I'll be seeing you. You too, Tequila Sunrise. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. Cool. So cool. Where's it coming from? From a distant sunset? A stage light? Flash photography? Nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Dick Mullen. Sa Salem Rocky... Baha'i, badass, on the edge, disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera, lights. Wait, what's that about a ludicrous fantasy world? Yeah, you know, beneath it is just heartbreak. A p pulmonary tract infection. Disease. And that's a very long word, so I'm going to skip that one if you don't mind. This is where you say action and reconceptualize it all, reinvent it as the world's first celebrity police officer. <laughs> this is the beginning of your legend. Fuck it. Action! With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you, and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome si solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. So we can be a little cool. Maybe. Although I think avoiding the drink and the drugs might be best for us all. Right. I'm going to head back to the Whirling. Uh, just have a poke at this this place of interest first, maybe. Maybe it's further away than I thought. Hurry up, then. Hurry up. Ah. 
Okay. We didn't have a look around here, but we can do that maybe sometime when we come back. How do we get across this uh, dock? There we go. There we go. few side quests to sort out. The question is, do we talk to the Hardy Boys again now we've heard the tape? Hmm, let's have a quick look at those gloves we picked up, why not? Uh, I don't think we can interact with them. Plus two, plus one to half light. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see if anything's come in on the boots. Still no word. Okay. Well. And we can't seem to ask anything about the gloves. Looks like they're ours, baby. Can I help you? Hmm, so, Gart, I found a new bird for the whirling. Give him the ruffled grouse. What is this thing? The man takes the stuffed bird. It's no biggie, I just thought it would look nice on the wall. And that kind of cop. What, the interior decorating kind? He inspects the bird, somewhat suspiciously, then mellows. You know, I'm sorry, this is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. He hesitates, so I don't know. Thank you? I'm gonna go with thank you. I feel good about our work here today, the lieutenant nods. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. <laughs> it's not actually about that, but he liked it. Look Kim, we have to do these things. <laughs> okay. Off to the boat lady. We can do this thing. We can flash her our card. And hopefully get somewhere. out here even in the rain okay you're back good what can I help you with not mm. an umbrella I hope <laughs> I don't need one myself you see she pats her wet raincoat mm. I could use a coat like that the rain is freezing sadly I need this one myself it's hydrophobic repels water almost magically the company makes them for offshore platform personnel. Very sturdy. She gives the material another pat. What I can do for you is answer some questions. Nothing like talking to pass a rainy day? Show her your badge. I found my badge, by the way. By love, you did. She inspects the piece of blue plastic, her eyes scanning from left to right. She hands it back to you. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant Devil Euphrata Dubois. I'm afraid to see a, a man of high... I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. Seaweed drips from the badge in your hand. It smells of fish. <laughs> what can I help you with, Lieutenant Euphrata? How about you share your information on the lynching, now that you've seen his badge? The goalposts have moved, Lieutenant. In the absence of the badge, I have informed my employee 
employer, there will be a probe. I cannot rescind that promise, she smiles apologetically. To my knowledge, the drivers are still at the roundabout. I will tell you everything I know when you've finished with them. Mm. This was your plan all along. She shakes her head vigorously. My plan is to share information. The only way to do that now is by telling my employers you've kept your end. Which I hope you will. Because, let me tell you, we are in dire waters. Meaning, the information she has will raise the stakes in this game. The sooner the probe is finished, the sooner I can share crucial information with you. She takes a sip of tea. Now, is there anything I can do for you in the meanwhile? Tea, perhaps? Um, it's a shame we can't say yes to the tea. Hmm, <clears throat> okay, thank you, that's all for now. Thank you for being not helpful in the least. But a deal is a deal. I mean, I will finish the investigation anyhow, because side quest, how could I not? wonder if we can persuade Cindy, is it? Cindy the Skull? Hello again, Indeed. Officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Mm. So we can attempt to explain our artistic intentions again, which we seem bad at. <sighs> okay. Is there any way we can get our conceptualization up? Let's have a look. Hmm. Yes, conceptualization on this jacket. Anything else? Nope. 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 Oh, come on. Haha, <laughs> drama. You get a lot of drama. Ah. None of these take away from it, do they? This is that's, that's kind of good. We could we could uh, level up our conceptualization in theory. Okay, 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 conceptualization. Apparently, we're good at this. <laughs> Let's put a point in. Why not? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire? It's still my only at like seventeen percent. <sighs> Let's do it. Jeez, <laughs> that was a lucky roll, wasn't it? You don't have the skills to execute something like this in practice, but oh boy, the idea is going to blow her fucking mind. I'm going to create a highly detailed skeleton of an ancient bird that went extinct a hundred million years ago. She squints her eyes, and then I'm going to paint it red using <laughs> heavy fuel oil. And then I'm going to fucking light it on fire. Her lips move on fire, she whispers to herself. It's the phoenix, get it? What do you say? She hunches her shoulders and throws you a grim look. I say sod off. You don't have the technical skills to do that. <laughs> Sorry, was the image offensive? Did you survive an avian attack as a child? Didn't we all? I like your idea. Should have thought of it myself. I don't need this kind of competition in my neighbourhood. Damn, it was too strong. <laughs> but... Cindy, art is bigger than either of us. <laughs> then get your brush from f fucking art. Oops, my apologies. I guess I was trying too hard. <laughs> You're a police officer and a grown-up. Why are you <laughs> trying to impress her? Maybe try a different approach, like climbing up there. Mm, maybe. So, I could get to her this way. We've got to get that brush. We've got to do the art. 
Kim's not going to like this, is he? <laughs> right, to the balcony. Okay, okay. We can do this. Let me search a living quarters for a paintbrush. Surely we can just buy a again, <laughs> Have you come to admire my mural? Okay, I'm sorry for invading your personal space like this, but I'm going to take that paintbrush from you, kiddo. And I need an aircraft character, so what? Okay. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you again. Give me the paintbrush, please. She looks at you suspiciously. Have you got any kids? Because you sound like the world's saddest dad right now. Ooh, but sad dad gets a paintbrush. But fine, take the brush. I'm all out of fuel oil anyway. She drops the paintbrush at your feet. You know what you've got in that fuel canister you scavenge from your quinoa. <laughs> Red dyed heavy fuel oil. Time to get... To proper work, artiste. Thank you, Cindy. It's all for the art. You won't regret it. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. There's a box we haven't, we haven't delved in here. And we get to scavenge something. Excellent. Can't see anything else scavengeable. Off we go then. Right, I suspect Kim will not just stand by and let us proceed without art. We'll have to wait until it is his beddy pies. In the meantime, that's your lot. Please leave a contribution in the little box or, uh, you know, join my Patreon to uh, support projects like this and real, real proper art and everything. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you can keep following this stuff. Thank you for watching and so long. Thank you to my epic patrons who make videos like these possible. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>